Today's video is about sticking this in this. Now if you have a saloon 9.5 or 9.3 or even an estate, things are a little bit easier. And I'll show you why. You can just grab any second hand subwoofer or even new one with a built-in amp and you can pop it in here. And the reason for that is because you have an enormous boot. There's so much room left over with the sub in here. I bet. <laughs> yep, you can still get a human body in the boot. One of the restrictions that you have with a convertible is that there isn't really anywhere in the car that you can put a bass speaker, a subwoofer. And that means you can't really enjoy the lower frequencies of the music that you listen to when you have a convertible. Now there is a couple of easy way outs. One of my other videos, which is where I installed some under seat subwoofers um, under the front passenger and driver's seat. The alternative, of course, is that you can build a box and you can place it in the boot underneath where the roof folds up. There's very limited size there, uh, but that would work fine, but you would lose out on the very little cargo space that you would have in a convertible anyway. That's not something that I really want to have to worry about. But option three and the way that we're going to be doing it is installing a subwoofer behind these seats where the stock subwoofer would have been if we had a premium sound system in this vehicle. So we need to be mindful about the type of subwoofer that we're going to be using in this build. We need an infinite baffle or a free air subwoofer. You might note that most car subwoofers come in a wooden MDF box and the reason for that is they rely on the air pressure uh, from within that box to essentially resonate the sound and give you the bass that you're looking for. And if you try to buy a subwoofer that was designed to be in a box and, and implement it in this kind of free air situation, it's gonna emit no sound uh, or it will be very, very quiet to the point that it's pointless. So a free air subwoofer is going to use the entire boot of this car as its enclosure. So all we really need to do is make sure that the wall that we're mounting it to is soundproofed so that the front of the subwoofer is, is separated from the rear of the subwoofer. And that's gonna give us some decent bass. You guys might know that I'm a fan of secondhand stuff. So I found this subwoofer on eBay. It is a 12 inch Pioneer free air subwoofer that runs at 300 watts. Um, you could of course go for something more powerful um, or less powerful, it's entirely up to you. But uh, this is what I'm gonna use. So the first thing that we need to do is take off the rear seats so that we can access the metal at the back. So we start this off by removing the headrests and this is done by lifting them up so that you can get your hand underneath and then pushing in the button behind the bars which will allow you to remove them. We do this on both sides. As you're doing it, you'll notice that underneath both of them is a star-headed screw which is actually holding the backrest in place. So this is our second job, is to remove these two screws. Now the screws are out, the top of the backrest will pull away from the metal wall. It's still held on by two clips on the bottom left and right. You can pull the backrest firmly away from the wall and that will release it from the clips that are holding it in place. Once you've done this, it's still held in place by the seat belts. So what I recommend you do is protect the back of your car and then lift the back of the chair all the way over and leave it on the back there. Something which I forgot to mention, which is actually really important, is that the 12 inch sub that I've bought is actually too big for the hole that's behind these seats. The stock location allows a eight inch sub to be installed. Anything larger than the eight inches is gonna require some modification to the metal wall behind the seats. You can fit 10 inch subs with very, very little modification. And obviously a 12 inch sub is gonna require a substantial amount of uh, additional cutting, which is what you're about to see me do.
So now that we've made the cuts, we need to sound deaden the rear firewall. So uh, that's what we're gonna do now. As you can see, I've already uh, stuck this stuff on and I've cut the hole for the subwoofer here. But things that you do remain, need to remember to cut are the areas where the seat belt protrudes through the bulkhead. You need to make sure that you give it enough slack that it still operates because otherwise the adhesive on the sound deadening is going to stop the seat belt from extending. The holes where the actual backrest clip in place, you need to make sure that they are available as well. That's what it's going to look like. Very nice. So this is what it looks like when the sub has been screwed into place. I use these type of screws, although I did drill a pilot hole before I put this through the metal bulkhead, but the, uh, these are the screws that are currently holding the sub to the metal base. The sub's installed, car's back together, and looks like it uh, always did. There's uh, absolutely no difference whatsoever, which is the exact stock look that I was uh, trying to achieve. So it's all good. Um, the sub sounds amazing. It really, really does. It is very, very powerful indeed. I can't really show you what it sounds like through this video for obvious reasons, but uh, I will tell you this, it is amazing. Very, very powerful uh, with the roof up and down. So I'm very, very pleased indeed. Um, and I, I hope this video has been uh, useful for, for, for the rest of you.